In the city of Medina lived the family of the Prophet After the death of Imam Hassan السلام, the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt were plotting against Imam Hussain News was spreading that the followers of the Imam wanted him to rise against the tyrant Yazid. What are you doing? We're building houses. Can I make one too? Of, of course. course. Whose house is this? This is my house. I live with my mother, my brothers, Qasim Zaid and Hassan. This is my house. This tall man is my father, Abbas, the roaring lion. Uncle Abbas is so kind, I love him. This is my uncle Hussein's house. This is my house. Inside it is my Baba Muslim, my mother and my brothers. I'm my Baba's favourite. I've been playing in the sun for too long. I need water. I'll get water for you, okay? Yeah? No, I will. Oh, I'll take that. Oh, okay, yeah. Here you are. Mother's been looking for you everywhere. Let's go so I can get you ready. Remember, we're going on a long journey. Do we get to ride on a camel? Yes, yes, you will. Why are we going to Gufa, dear Sakina? Because, because people in Gufa need to help to stand against Yazid. <laughs> Yes, that's right, Hamza. Baba told me that Yazid sent Walid to, to get allegiance from Uncle Hussein. Imam of our time, can you believe that? And my father replied, someone like me will never give allegiance to someone like Yazid. Even if he has to give his life? Definitely. Now hurry up, my valiant ones, and get ready. We have a long road ahead. The children left Medina with their family and made their way to Mecca. Who wants to have a shooting contest? Me! Me. Go easy on Artika. If she gets upset, she'll tell Baba. You know she's his favourite. There's no need to go easy on Artika. She'll beat us all anyway. Really? Let's see. Muhammad, Ibrahim, Artika, your Baba's leaving to Kufa. I'm so proud of my Baba. He's going to be the messenger of uh, um, Uncle Hussein. Me too, but seeing Baba go does make me sad. My children. What are you going to do in Gufa, Baba? <laughs> you know that the people of Gufa have become very wary of the injustices and hardships imposed by the corrupt government of Yazid. Imam Hussein has already received 20,000 letters from the people of Gufa inviting him 
to come and lead an uprising. I will go there and try to get their allegiance and test the waters. If I can see that these people are sincere and committed and they are ready to support him, then I will mobilize an army for our Imam Hussein so that he can come ready and prepared to lead the uprising and take over the unlawful dictator of Banu Umayyah. I will travel to Medina and go towards an unusual route for Kufa to avoid any suspicion. Is this a dangerous mission, Baba? My darling Atika, all that matters is that you are certain that you are on the right path. And if you are, then you are victorious whether you live or die for the cause. Don't think that those who are martyred in the way of Allah are dead, but rather they are living, receiving sustenance from Allah. Indeed, Muhammad. Now, my children, be prepared to serve your Imam at all times and fear nothing. Be obedient to your mother and make sure you take care of each other. Don't worry, Baba. We won't let you down. Farewell, my children. I now leave you in the protection of the Almighty. And so he left Mecca for Kufa, aware of the threats ahead, his children ready to face the even longer journey to come. The caravan had left Mecca on their journey and took stops along the way. At one destination, Imam Hussein salam, received news from a messenger. I remember my uncle called me to his tent and said to me, My darling niece, I'm saddened to tell you this. Your father has been martyred. We surely belong to Allah, and to him we shall return. My Baba has left this world and my heart is heavy with sadness. My dear Imam was grieved by this news and yet he comforted us. I wonder who will comfort his daughters when he departs from this world. Whilst morning, the caravan continued with their journey until they were stopped by Yazid's soldiers in the land of Karbala. They were forced to set up camp away from the river and were not allowed to leave. Despite their thirst, the children had to keep themselves occupied the boys would practice their sword fighting with the wish to serve their imam. The morning of the 10th of Muharram came and the battles were about to begin. The time came for Qasim to bid farewell to his curious cousins. Qasim, can you tell us what Uncle Hussein said last night? Yeah, please tell us. Our uncle gathered all his companions and said, It is my life that this army of thousands is after. 
You are under no obligation to stay. He said, go, go back to your families. Tell us more. What happened next? He then turned off the lamps and said that they should not feel embarrassed if they leave. Well, did anyone leave? When he turned on the lamps, all the companions were still there, standing with their swords unsheathed, some even holding their swords to their throat, to say that they were ready to give their lives for their imams. That is my wish, to sacrifice my life for my uncle Hussein. Just like our father. I asked my uncle if my name is among those who will be martyred tomorrow, and he asked me, how do you find death? What did you answer? Ah, oh, death to me is sweeter than honey. Now I will go and take leave of my beloved Uncle Hussein. I shall not rest until I give my life for him. Farewell, Qasim. One by one, our family members left. Ali Akbar, Qasim, our beloved Uncle Abbas, and finally, Uncle Hussein. They pierced a spear through Ali Akbar's chest. They broke Qasim's back and cut off Uncle Abbas's arms. They did not even spare the innocent Ali Asghar and struck an arrow through his tiny neck. It broke my heart to see the final farewell of my auntie Zainab and my Imam Hussein. The bodies were trampled under the hooves of horses and the enemies came to burn our tents. When the evening came, it was only us children and the woman who remained. Auntie Zainab stood fierce like a lion, trying her best to look after us. But the men came with their torches blazing and stole what they could from the camp, pushing the ladies and the children, setting tents on fire, and their hooves trampled over the bodies of any that came in their way. That night, children went missing. One of them was Artika.
poor Artica was martyred by the hooves of the horses, and she also became one of the martyrs of Karbala. The saga of pain had only just begun. The family of Imam Hussein salam would continue to witness tragedy upon tragedy. They were taken as a caravan of prisoners and were paraded through the streets of cities. But in the markets of Gufa, the boys had found a window of opportunity to escape with the hope of reaching Medina. Are you okay? Who are you hiding from? Look, don't be scared. I can help you. Tell me who you are so that I can help. My name is... Oi! Have you seen two little children around here? <coughs> two little children. Have you seen them? <coughs> Silly woman. Why would the capital guards of Kufa be searching for you? Water. Thank you, kind lady. May, May Allah, Allah bless, bless you. you. Such refined manners at a young age. You are no ordinary children. Come with me. I can take you to my home and give you something to eat. Please. No, really. We don't want to trouble you. All right. If you don't want to come with me, stay here. Hide. I, I will get some food for you. Okay? Psst. Psst. Hey, what is it? Why are you here? I've been looking for you everywhere. What is it now? Who are they? They're nephews of Hajj. Don't mind them. You were saying? Nephews of Hajj? You were saying? Oh, yes, yes. Um, okay, uh, the governor of Kufa has announced a bounty for anyone that can bring him news of two sons of Muslim that escaped from um, you know, the recent caravan of prisoners. I figured if I can find out some news about them, I can buy my freedom. You mean the caravan? of the holy household of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Um, well, yes. But you see, with the bounty, I can buy my freedom. And then we can get married. And <sighs> I might even have a little extra money to buy a house. Oh, Filet, you and your daydreaming. Go on now, hurry up and do your jobs. I, I have to go now. All right. All right, Salafa. But you see, one day I'll make it happen. Come, children, you are not safe here. We can't come with you. We can't trust anyone in this city. If you really want to help us, there's one thing you can do. What is it? Tell me. Take us to Kazi Sheree. Kazi Sheree? You are full of surprises, my little darlings. What does a child like you have to do with Kazi Sheree? But I'll see what I can do. Hide here and don't move anywhere. Are they who I think they are? The sons of Muslim? Who can it be at this hour? Asad, who is it at this hour? Sons of Muslim bin Akil. Sons of Muslim bin Akil? You're our father's friend, aren't you? Yes, 
I am a friend of your father. I said, go ask the maid to prepare a meal for them. Yes, father. And listen, she must not know who they are. Come, take a seat. Sit down. Tell me, please, how did you come to Kufa? A kind lady helped us come here. A kind lady? Hmm. But what are you doing here in Kufa? We were brought here from Garbala. We were in a caravan full of prisoners. Of course. The soldiers were cruel and they hit Ibrahim, so he tried to escape. Escaped? To Kufa? But the whole city is a prison for you. Where do you think you can go? Medina. We want to go to Medina. 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 Hmm. Asad, what have you done? You will help us, right? Of course. Food is ready for our beloved guests. Asad, take them to the maid. Give them their food. And let's prepare some beds for them as well. They must rest well tonight. And listen, when you are done, come back. Come here, we have much to discuss. Yes, my lord. Come, take a seat. <coughs> now tell me, who brought them in? A lady. Her face was covered. I couldn't recognize who she was. She said she thinks they're the sons of Muslim. Do you have any idea of the position I'm in now? Oh, I do. And I think it'd be rather fun to watch the events unfold. Son, the attitude and lifestyle you have, the luxury you enjoy, it's all because of my position and respect. All of which you have put in danger now. Oh, but were you not amongst those who signed the letter to Hussein ibn Ali, promising your allegiance? Times have changed. Hussein ibn Ali has been killed. But that has not had the effect that Yazid and Ibn Zayd had hoped for. Instead of intimidating the people into silence, it has opened their eyes to the truth and given them courage to rebel. Who would have thought a caravan of tired and broken women and children will turn the tables in such manner. <sighs> Ibn Ziyad is sniffing like a dog. He suspects treachery and rebellion in every household in Kufa. He has sent his soldiers to kill just at the mere suspicion of something happening. Surely the highest position of the court of Kufa would have some immunity. I worked hard to win the confidence of the people and the government. Now, with these boys hiding in my place, not only is my position in threat, but so is my life in danger. If the word gets out, no, no, it must not get out. <laughs> I didn't know two young boys had such power. No, no, but these are no ordinary children. They are sons of Muslim, and on their mother's side, they are grandsons of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Kufa still remembers the generosity and justice of Ali. And more important than that, these boys were in Karbala. They are harbingers of Hussein. So what will we do with them now? Tomorrow morning, I think you should go and find the earliest convoy to Medina. We will send them under an alibi. We'll send it for me. We'll send it for you. 400 dirhams. 400? Ha, you know I would receive a thousand just for letting slip that I know where the boys are. Look here, son. 
all this estate, everything we have, it belongs to you. If you don't take care of the boys and people find out, everything will be at risk. We will all be in grave danger. There'll be nothing left. You'll have nothing to inherit but a grave. All right, all right. I'll find someone. Thank you for helping us. You are a very good man. Yes, yes, I'm good. I'm your friend. The convoy should be here soon. Cover your faces and join them. I remember the instructions Ghazi gave us. When we arrive to Medina, we have to pay 10 dinar to the convoy leader. The rest is ours. Ah, oh, you know what? I think I should look after your money for you until it's time. Someone might snatch you or hurt you to take it. Aha, here they are. Off you go then, sons of Muslim. I always remember you. But aren't you coming with us? Ghazi told us you were going to come to the convoy leader with us. Oh no, 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 I can't do that. What if someone recognises me? Ufa is full of spies. And anyways, you're sensible boys, aren't you? You don't need me, do you? Off you run then, or you'll be late. Our money? No, 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 you won't be needing any. But we need some to pay the convoy leader. This is all you need. Off you go. Guards! Over here! You rascals! How dare you cause trouble in the capital city? Ugh. Now walk. Walk to your doom. Where have you been all this time? Ugh. I said, where were you? You will never be able to get anything out of us. We are as firm as mountains and our lips are sealed. Is that so? Well, one thing is for certain. I've got the right children. You've got the blood of Ali circulating in your veins. There's no doubt about that. I'm going to send over one of the harshest guards over to you. He'll make you sing like a bird in no time. <laughs> Excuse me? Which way is Gibla? What did you say? Which way is Gibla? <laughs> Kibla? There is no Kibla here. This is a ditch from hell. <laughs> I do not like it here. I know, Ibrahim, but we must have faith and pray to Allah. Our Lord, bestow upon us patience and make our steps firm and give us help against the disbelievers. Their fate was now at the mercy of the wretched guards, so they continued to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Would they ever be free from the notorious dungeons of Gufa? Hmm. So you're the two new troublesome boys, huh? I thought you'd be bigger, if I'm being honest, I thought you'd be bigger. But anyway, I'm the new duty guard. So, the previous guards here, um, he succumbed to some poison that he had in his food. 
which you were meant to eat. We do not wish him ill. We pray that he finds the light of guidance. Who sent us poison food? You see, this is this is what baffles me. There's a lot of mystery surrounding you. Why is Bukhair, the chief guard, so anxious and paranoid about two young boys? Why would someone try to poison you, even in these dungeons? What is so special about you that they chose me, the most trustworthy senior guard, to keep you under control? Tell me, what have you done? We're innocent. We've done nothing wrong. <laughs> That's what they always say. You're not as naive as you look. I hear you were kept in the leper's cell. Yes, yes that's, that's right. right. They say you weren't scared of him. No. The toughest of prisoners lose their mind when they're locked up with him. How were you not scared? His state was one that calls for empathy and compassion, not fear. He was suffering from an illness. He's a human, not a beast. Your manners and words remind me of Ali ibn Abi Talib. You're not ordinary children, let alone troublemakers. I beg you tell me who you are. We are already in the den of beasts. We might as well tell you who we are. My name is Ibrahim, son of Muslim. I'm Muhammad, son of Muslim. Muslim? Muslim bin Aqil? You're the grandsons of Ali. Ah, oh, oh, mashkur, mashkur, mashkur. What oh, an ill-fated man you are. Oh, at this age, your special assignment is to beat and scare the children of the Ahlul Bayt. Forgive me, forgive me, please. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Forgive me, my sons. I can't even lift my head and look into your eyes after what we've done to your father and now yourselves. Allah says, O oh my servants who have transgressed against their souls, despair not of the mercy of Allah, for Allah forgives all sins, for he is the forgiving, most merciful. Our uncle Hussein forgave Hur after everything he did. I'm sure he'll forgive you too. Stand up tall, Mashkur. <laughs> When I walk in. Now tell me, tell me, okay. Whose house were you staying in when you were trying to join the convoy from Medina? Mashkur, we already told you, we can't tell you. You're protecting him, even though he sent someone to poison you. What makes you think it was him? It is someone who fears that the word will get out, that it is his house you took refuge in. He is influential enough to infiltrate the prison. He must have feared that if you talk, his life and his position will be in danger. So he decided to end your lives. But we promised that we wouldn't tell anyone. We don't break our promises. You sons amaze me. You know, if in Kufa they had half of your chivalry, they would have not let Hussein down. I've made the biggest thugs in Kufa sing like nightingales. You think you can define me? I've been working on a plan for your escape. Tonight is the night. Salafa will help us. She's going to distract the guards at the entrance. Salafa? How do you know Salafa? <laughs> it's a small word. Salafa found out that you are under my watch. She's close to my wife. She has been like a mother to her ever since that poor child lost her own mother. Anyways, she will not rest until she sees you out of harm's way. How kind is Salafa? May Allah bless her. Eat and sleep well. You will need your strength tonight. I have to go now. Thank, Thank you, Mashkur.
My school! What are you doing? Are you letting them escape? Boys, bro. They won't leave you. They won't leave you. I will not let you do this. Go without me. I'll only slow you down. May Allah reward you for all your help. May God be with you. Maybe we should ask somebody if we could stay with them for the night. Ibrahim, we cannot trust anyone. The school helped us greatly, but we're still in danger. Where will we sleep for the night? Don't worry, my dear brother. Allah will protect us. I will pray and you will keep a lookout. I am fearful of what comes now. What will we eat? My brother, you have much to be thankful for. We have found somewhere to rest, and we have each other. Inshallah, tomorrow, we will find something to eat and some water to drink. Now don't worry so much, and rest. I'll keep a lookout. Come and rest. What's wrong, Ibrahim? Mother, mother, she was with us and was caressing us. Oh, how I miss her. I miss her as well, but she's in our hearts. The son's a Muslim. We need to leave. Haven't you heard the children of Muslim are still on the run? Can you believe that such young children have the entire city looking for them? Hmm. So young. And yet look at the havoc they've caused. The governor won't rest until they've been captured, dead or alive. What crimes have they committed? They are in the opposition to the government. The family of the Prophet and grandchildren of Ali have never been safe from the politics of Caliphate. The uprising of Imam Hussein has reverberated across the land and Banu Umayyah will not allow their name to be tarnished by the events of Garbala. These children have created a dilemma for them. If they let them live, they become a voice of truth. But if they kill them, they will not be able to justify their death to the public as they tried to do with Imam Hussein. After all, they are children. I'm tired. We should rest for a while. <laughs> Who are these children? Outside our house?
Children. Children. Come in. Come in. Come inside. Thank you, kind lady. We do not wish to trouble you. I can't let you sleep outside. I can't let you be outside right this time. You should come inside with me. It's not good. It's not good for you to be outside. Come with me, you go to sleep, and then we can leave first thing in the morning. Mohammed, we shouldn't. You must stay here tonight. My master, Mawla Ali, Ibn Abi Talib, have said to look after the orphans after him. And children, you seem to be without parents. So let me take care of you. Yeah. Come with me inside. Come, let's go. You knew of Ali? Of course. Of course. How can I not know my Mawla Ali? He's the greatest ruler this city of Kufa have ever seen. Without him, there's chaos and tragedy. Come with me. Come. We are related to him. He is our grandfather. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Are you the children of Muslim bin Akil? Yes, he's our father. Are you the sons of my lady Rukaya? She and our lady Zainab have taught us the tafsir of Holy Quran. You must come with me. You knew of our mother? Yes. Yes, my children. You must stay here tonight. How can I let the grandchildren of my Mola roam the dangerous streets of Kufa while there is a price on their head? Allow me the honor of taking care of you. Come, my children. Kind lady, we thank you for your service. May Allah bless you and grant you Jannah. It is I who is thankful to you. Serving the children of Ahlul Bayt is a pride for me. But there is one thing. You must not be seen by my son-in-law Haris and his slave. Otherwise your lives will be in great danger. <laughs> come, come with me. The brothers finally felt comforted with the help of the kind lady, unaware of the fact that they had fallen right into the clutches of an enemy. Why are the nephews of Hajar in the house of Harith? They can't be the nephews of Hajar. Otherwise, they'd be in their own homes. Thankfully, which children would be in a stranger's house in the depths of the night? They must be the sons of Muslim, the same children the entire city is chasing after for their share of gold. These children. These children are the key to my marriage with Salafa. The bounty on their head has doubled. If I hand them in, I'd be rich. I could buy my freedom and no longer be a servant of Hadith. Now I must tell Salafa of my plan. And then we can start a new life together. Will Filet see the light or will his greed take over him. Fale, why have you called me here? Ever since my father found out that I helped Mashkur escape with those kids, he has not let me leave our house. I had to trick a maid into leaving the door open so I could come here. Salafa, 
Harith's mother-in-law has taken the children of Muslim into his home. If we tell the governor, then we can get the bounty and start our new lives together. No, Fulin. We cannot start the foundations of our marriage with the blood of these innocent children. But who are they to us? We have no relation to them. They are the children of the Ahl al-Bayt. We cannot take their life so carelessly. But with the bounty, we can get married. The entire city is chasing after them. What difference does it make if we hand them in or if someone else does? Do you know what the governor of Kufa will do to them? Their lives will not be spared. Oh. That would be... Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Their lives are precious beyond our imagination and you think it would be unfortunate. What has happened to you, Fulay? You are not the man that I wanted to marry. What, what do you mean? Where are your morals? What have these innocent children done to deserve such a cruel fate? To make things worse, they are from the family of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. It has not been long since Imam Hussein was martyred on the plains of Gurbala, thirsty and alone. And these tyrants won't even let their children live in peace. These cowards want to shut them up by taking them captive. But what is their crime? They have done nothing wrongfully. And you want to give them in to Ibn Ziyad? If this is the man that you truly are, I do not wish to marry you. Salaf. What was I thinking? I need to share a secret with you. Mother, what's the matter? Other night, there were two children outside of our house and they had nowhere to sleep. So I invited them in. But they are not ordinary children. They are the sons of Muslim. <gasps> oh. You mean the son of Muslim Bilaqil? What do I do? Oh, if my husband finds out, he will kill the boys. Indeed, this is why we must protect them from greedy Haris and Fulay. Yes, certainly. We have to do something about it, inshallah. We will find a way to take them out from may, Kufa safely. May God protect them. My mother, inshallah. Children of my mother. What do you need? I have left a bag of money in the workshop. I need it. Okay, take your seat. I'll go and get it. That's just money. I've also made some food for you. Now what do you need? My letters are in a basket. I need them. Okay, now sit down, I'll go and get it. Why does my wife continue to prevent me from entering that room? There must be something that she's hiding.
Children, I think we need to go out. Harith has left the house. Thank you, kind lady. It's my duty and honour to serve the grandchildren of Amir al muminin May Allah reward you for all your service. I'm worried my husband Harith will find you, and he won't hesitate to hand you over to Ibn Ziyad. Well, your worries were rightly concerned. The sons are Muslim in my home. Of course I'll be making use of this. No, Harith. They have done nothing. They Quiet, woman. The money I'll receive from handing these kids over will make me rich. Fule, Fule, come with a rope. Yes, master. No. Let's tie these kids over. No, no, please. No, please don't do this. Please don't. <laughs> Perhaps I can get more money if I hand in their heads. If you have made your mind up to kill us, at least let us pray our two rukats Salah and prepare to go to our Lord. All right, all right, be quick. Fule, kill them! Fule, I said kill them! Please, take my life. My innocent brother has done nothing wrong. No, take mine. Leave Muhammad. I cannot kill these children. Harith, it's time I freed my soul from the shackles of injustice. I'm sorry, children. I, I, I couldn't save you. Free. I'm free. Why aren't you scared? Why aren't you begging for mercy? We learnt from our Uncle Hussein never to bow down to tyrants. We will never be humiliated. We stand on the path for justice. Ibrahim, last night I had a dream with Father and Uncle Hussein. They said, hurry up, we are waiting for you restlessly. The moment of our coming together is close. My heart is filled with peace, Muhammad. All my woes and pains are gone. Ah!